Well, this morning, I want to share on something else that is very connected to our walk, and that is faith. Everybody say faith. And I want to ask you the question, and I want, to, I want God's Word to answer this question for us. What is faith? In our opening video, it was, it was based out of our scripture text this morning. In Hebrews chapter 11, verses 1 through 6. And the Word of God again says this to us. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. For by it, by faith, the elders obtained a good report. Through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God so that the things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. By faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain by which he obtained witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts, and by it he, being dead, still speaks. By faith, Enoch was taken away, so that he did not see death, and was not found because God had taken him. For before he was taken, he had this testimony that he pleased God. And then verse 6, but without faith it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently Seek and, and we could continue reading the next 34 verses in chapter 11 and all of these scriptures would also speak concerning faith of many others that we see in the Bible. Now, now when it comes to the epistle, this book the book of Hebrews, we don't know for sure who wrote it. We don't know for sure its author. Many believe that it was the Apostle Paul, and often it is listed there in the Pauline epistles, the letters of Paul. But we don't know for sure who authored this book? Of course, we do know that all Scripture is God-breathed, and it, it is inspired by God. It comes from God as he moved upon holy men of old to record his words. But as far as the one who penned the epistle of Hebrews, we don't know for sure. What we do know is that Hebrews was initially written to Christians who were living in Jerusalem. Christians who were going through persecution for believing in Jesus as their Messiah. History tells us that the followers of Judaism believed that Messiah would come and he would be a militant king, a warrior who would deliver Israel from the oppression of Roman rule. Well, the Christians, listen, the Christians believed in Jesus as their Messiah. But the Romans oversaw the death of Jesus. When he was crucified on a criminal's cross between two thieves. The Judaizers believed the Romans killed Jesus and took life 
from him. And that in their minds disqualified Jesus from being the Messiah. What they failed to realize was this, and listen closely, precious East, Eastway family, this is a core belief for us as Christians. The Romans did not take the life of Jesus from him. Jesus laid down his own life for the sins of the entire world. Jesus said this, and he put it this way in John chapter 10. I lay my life down that I may take it back again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of myself. He said, I have the power to lay it down, and I have the power to take it again. This command I have received from my Father. In Matthew 26, while Jesus was there praying in the Garden of Gethsemane, was he there planning a, a military coup? Was he there organizing a rebellion against Rome? Was he there preparing a, an insurrection? No, he was there praying. Well, what was his prayer? Oh, my Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. The Romans did come in, and they grabbed Jesus after Judas' betrayal kiss. But then here comes Peter running with a sword, and he cut off one of the soldier's ear. And what did Jesus do? Did he pick up a battle sword? Did he lead an uprising against those soldiers? No, he picked up the ear, and with healing hands, he restored it back to the man. But then he said this to Peter and to everyone else listening. Put your sword back in its place. Jesus said to him, For all who draw the sword will die by the sword. Do you not think I cannot call on my Father and he will at once at my disposal give more than 12 legions of angels? But how then would the scriptures be fulfilled that say it must happen this way? Brothers and sisters, hear me. It was not the Romans who took the life of Jesus. It was Jesus who gave his life according to the will of his heavenly Father. And thank you, Jesus, for giving your life. Thank you, Jesus, for obeying the will of God. Thank you for your blood that you shed for each and every one of us here and for the sins of the entire world. Hallelujah. But the Judaizers, the Judaizers did not believe in Jesus as Messiah because he did not come in the way that they thought he would or the way that they thought he should. And the religious Jews persecuted those who believed in and followed Jesus as Messiah. So much so, now hear this, so much so that some Christians there in Jerusalem were contemplating and considering turning back to Judaism's system of law to escape the persecution. And there again, brothers and sisters, Hebrews... This letter was basically written to exhort the believing Jews who trusted Jesus as their Messiah to do this. 
Hold on to what you believe. Would you look at your neighbor and tell them that hold on? People may call you crazy, but hold on to what you believe. They may think that you've gone literally out of your mind, but hold on to what you believe. They may challenge you by saying, Jesus, all this Jesus stuff is just a lie. It's all made up. But brothers and sisters, hold on to what you believe. But it's going to take something. And the writer of Hebrews knew this. It's going to take faith. But what is faith? Verse 1 says, now faith is the substance. Say that word substance. The substance of things hoped for. Faith is substance. Hupotasis in the Greek. Faith is substance. It's the firm foundation of our belief. It's the confident trust of things we hope for. Faith is something tangible. Faith is something touchable. Faith is something solid and substantial. It is the substance of things Hope for. Can I remind us it is there in Hebrews 11? Faith caused, caused Abraham to walk with God to an unknown destination. Faith called Sarah to wait on God for the promised son. Faith caused Noah to build the ark even though it had never rained. Come on, somebody. Faith caused Moses to stretch forth his rod. It caused Gideon to whittle down his army to 300. It caused Elijah to build an altar, add water, and pray for fire to come down. Faith caused Ezekiel to speak to a valley full of dry bones saying, Dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. In the New Testament, caused a little lad to give his lunch of fish and loaves, which in turn fed the multitude. Faith caused Peter to step out onto the waves as Jesus said, come. It also helped and caused Peter to reach out to a lame man at the gate called Beautiful, and he said, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I do have give I unto thee in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Rise up and walk. You see, faith is substance. It's something solid. It's calling on God and he shows up. It's giving sacrificially and seeing God's blessings flow into your life. Faith is at work when we invite someone to come to church expecting them to also be blessed. It's giving your testimony. Come on, somebody. It's asking God to send revival. It's praying for a harvest of souls. Faith is doing something God wants us to do. It's giving something God wants us to give. Going somewhere where God wants us to go and believing something God wants us to believe. Faith is tangible. Faith is substance. It is the substance of things hoped for. Faith is also this. It's the evidence of things not seen. Evidence. El hijo. The proof. You ever heard this statement? If Christianity was a crime... Would there be enough evidence to prove you were guilty? Amen. 
it's been said that 90% of Americans believe that there is a God. But is that only a mental belief? I wonder how many truly have a heartfelt belief in God. You see, individuals can say that they believe all they want, but actions through lifestyle will be the evidence of the truth. In Luke 18, Jesus shares the parable of a persistent widow. And and in this parable, he shares something very sobering. He says this, When the Son of Man comes, will he really find faith on the earth? Will he really find faith on the earth? Brothers and sisters, I want you to hear it again. Faith is work. Faith is effort. Faith is getting involved. Faith is evidence. Can I tell you that David could have stood behind the rocks like everybody else until the giant died of old age. But his faith caused him to walk out onto the battlefield. You see, David had faith as his foundation, the substance. But his faith moved him to action. And that became the evidence of his faith. Can I tell you, standing by and doing nothing, that's not faith. Engaging to make a difference with God's help, Now that's faith. Come on, somebody. I mean, we can say, here's another example. We can say that God wants to save the lost. Hey, would you say that with me? God wants to save the lost. He wants to save the lost. Now we can say that. We can say that 24-7. Over and over and over, God wants to save the lost. But if we are not praying for harvest, if we are not reaching to those who are in bondage, if we are not sharing the love of God with everyone we see, if our hearts aren't engaged in making a difference for Jesus, Brothers and sisters, our faith is dead. It's just empty words. But when our faith is alive, here's what happens. The substance, the foundation of what we are hoping for will bring the evidence of our belief that Jesus is the only hope for lost humanity. When we're truly concerned about lost souls, faith knocks on doors. Come on. Faith picks up the phone and makes a call. Come on, come on. Faith prays for the harvest. Faith gives an invitation for someone to be introduced to Jesus. Faith moves us to come out for corporate prayer time to pray for the harvest that's all around us. Come on, somebody. Faith is work. As Rob is beginning to play, I close with this statement. As simple as this. You might say, Pastor, is that all you got today? That's all God gave me. And it's enough. You see, faith is both substance our foundation for what we believe, and faith is evidence, the willingness to make a difference with God's help. What are you hoping for? I mean, so many, and there again, I mean no harm to 
to Christian brothers and sisters who follow their traditions. So many are exercising their faith. So that they can get more and more. And listen, I agree with Brother Guy and Sungo that God wants us to enjoy the fruit of our labor. He wants us to enjoy what we work for and the things that we have. He wants, he wants us to enjoy them. But faith is not all about what I can get. More and more and more. It is not some, it's not some tool that I use to name it and then claim it and get it. What are you believing for? I mean, listen, there's a time and place where our needs that we have, we trust God to meet them. And we exercise faith that He will supply our need. Amen. Brothers and sisters, I, I, I tell you this. When it gets right down to it, the exercising of faith, that substance of things we're hoping for, I'm hoping for, for lost family members like my Uncle Bernard this week who passed away just a few days ago. But before he passed away, my mother had driven down and she had prayed all the way down there because she had to know that her youngest brother was ready to meet Jesus that he had called and she was able to lead him to the Lord and he made a confession of faith. That was what my mom was hoping for. That's what I hope for. More than anything else, I'm wanting and I'm hoping and I'm wanting to exercise my faith and I want the evidence of my faith to cause me to want to make a difference in this world so that lost souls come to Jesus. So that hurting ones are helped. Stand with me all over the building. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Pray with me. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, power. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on this earth as it is in heaven. God, may we exercise our faith and trust you that the things that you want become the things that we desire. The things that you have already settled in heaven become the things that are settled in our heart as being the most important. God, we don't want to lay up for ourselves treasures here on earth, but rather treasures in heaven. And Lord, it's the good news of the gospel that we have received and it's the word from your heart to ours and the call from your heart to ours that caused each of us to believe on Jesus and to confess Him as our answer. Lord, what you've done for us that was settled in heaven and it came about on earth. But what you've done for us, you want to do for everyone. I pray that your will be done here on earth as it is in heaven. But also, Lord, let your will be done in earth, in these earthen vessels. In us, let your will be done in us. May our faith be vibrantly alive. God, when we lay hands on the sick, I pray, God, that you will, that you will give us the faith to believe that as we pray, the sick will be healed. 
God, even the blinded eyes opened or the lame walk or even the dead to be raised. Let our faith be evident and alive. I pray for my brothers. Reach and lay your hand on somebody close. I pray for my brothers and sisters this morning. Oh God, that as we are walking this Christian walk, Lord, what's necessary is vibrant faith. In these last days, we've got to hold on to what we believe. We can't turn it loose. We can't fall trap to the wiles of the enemy. We, we can't fall trap to, to what, what men are saying, oh Lord, that's false truth. We've got to hold on to what we believe. We know who the truth is. You are the way, the truth, and the life, Jesus. We must hold on to what we believe. I pray that you'll cement that into our hearts this morning. That's a word from you. Hold on to what you believe. Hold on to what you believe. I pray that faith, faith, oh God, as that foundation will be so evident. So the things we hope for, yes, We'll see the evidence of them, the answer. Like that persistent widow, she kept on asking. And she received. By faith, we'll keep on asking. We'll keep on praying for our lost loved ones. We'll keep on believing, oh God, for a harvest of souls right here at Eastway. We'll keep on believing, Lord. You touched Jose last week and you redeemed his life from the pit. You gave him a brand new start. And here he is in the house of God. We, we give you praise for, uh, for another soul who's come to the kingdom. We give you honor, but so many more. God, we're believing you. Touch us. I pray. Heads are bowed, eyes are closed. If there is anyone here in this building or watching by live stream who has never received the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior in the full pardon of your sin. Today's your day. He's calling your name. He's reaching to you right where you're at. Is there anyone in the building who's never received Jesus? Would you simply slip up your hand? No one's looking around. Anyone here? Anyone here? Anyone here that would say, Pastor, I have strayed, I have wandered, but I'm wanting to come back home to the Father's house today. I'm wanting to do my first works again. I'm wanting to repent. I'm wanting the Lord to restore my relationship with Him. Is there anyone in the building that would say, I want to come back to Jesus? Simply raise your hand. Is there anyone here? Yes, Lord. Bless you. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Reach your hand in this direction. Father, right now in Jesus' name, dear Isla, Lord, she responded saying that she just wants to rededicate her heart today. And Lord, I praise you for that. And we now pray with her saying, Lord Jesus, here I am. I come to you and I ask you to restore me completely. Renew my relationship with you. I know you, Jesus, as my Savior and I yield again to you saying that I need you. I must have your touch. I rededicate my life to you today. For Christ's sake, amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. This past Wednesday night, brothers and sisters, had, they gathered here for Community Harvest Prayer Night. It happens one Wednesday night a, a month as of now. The first Wednesday night, it's a joint prayer service between our church family and our gates of heaven church family who meets in our gymnasium the same time we do on Sunday mornings.
And we are all praying for harvest. We're praying for a harvest. You realize that God has allowed you and allowed me to live, to be born in this day and time. And as followers of Jesus, He has called us to work in His harvest. He's called us as His laborers to work in His harvest field. And the fields are white and ready. But we must pray. We must pray. The Lord of the harvest will send us forth. Anoint us as we go so that we might reap a harvest. Bring others to Jesus. Introduce them to the Lord. Share your testimony. Look at your neighbor and say, share your testimony today. Share your testimony today with the waitress or the waiter. Tell them you're a Christian and that you love them with the love of the Lord and, and just share your testimony. Don't get all weird. Don't jump up and try to slay them in the spirit there in the restaurant. Come on. It ain't, it ain't all about getting slain in the spirit and laying in the floor. If it happens and it does, thank God for those wonderful times. But if that's all we're looking for in our relationship with Jesus, come on, somebody. There's so much more than just an emotional high for a few moments. Lord, help me. Where did that come from? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Share your testimony. Live vibrant for Jesus. Walk around with a smile on your face. And when others ask, why are you so happy during such challenging times, tell them, I, I, I know Jesus and he is the one that gives me the joy each and every day of my life. He's my answer and your answer as well. Father, touch us and anoint us. Energize our faith. Why don't you say to the Lord right now, energize my faith. Uh. That measure that you gave to each of us, Jesus, I pray, God, that you would strengthen and energize our faith. Oh, hymn writer said, and I close with this. You might say, well, pastor, you done said that twice. Serious. I'm living by faith in Jesus alone. Trusting, confiding in his great love. From all harm safe, in his sheltering arms, I'm living by faith in Jesus, and I'll, feel, and I'll experience no harm. I'm living by faith in Jesus alone. Go with us, Father, I pray. In the name of Jesus, shine brightly through us. I thank you for the faith you have given to us. We trust you. We believe you. We diligently seek you. And we give you all the praise. In the name of Jesus and all God's people say amen. 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 God bless you in the name of the Lord. Greet one another. Have a great, wonderful week in Jesus' name. Amen.